So there's a, a very big difference. It, in, in rheumatoid arthritis or in ankylosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis, the inflammatory arthritis, what we do is we do start therapy with conventional synthetic themoids. These are oral small molecule chemicals made in a factory, not protein, and they work. And they work in about a third of patients, and they work quite well in about a third of patients. Um, and they're cheap, and they're rel relatively cheap. The biologicals have been, a, been since 1999 in the United States, maybe a little bit later in Europe, uh, but they've been around for 18 years. And they are more powerful. They, they, they are more effective than the conventional synthetics in the patients who don't fully respond to the conventional synthetics. So what we do is we start a conventional synthetic, and if a patient still has disease activity, then we add the biologic. So in my practice, as I said, if the conventional synthetic is really effective in 30% of patients, then in my practice, my goal is to have 70% of patients on a biologic or something that's more powerful. Biologics are proteins, biologic produce antibodies. It is preferable in groups of patients to use biologics in combination with methotrexate actually, the, the conventional synthetic, or another conventional synthetic if the patient can't take methotrexate. So that's preferable. Individual patients could do well with monotherapy. And in my practice, there are probably 10, 15% who are monotherapy biologics. Around the world, the number may be 30%. Uh, so not every patient requires a background conventional synthetic like methotrexate, but most do, and most do better in combination. No, but you have to understand that if you have rheumatoid arthritis and you're not taking therapy, you're not taking treatment, there is a real risk of infection, a real risk of infection. And then with the therapies, your infection risk may go down. You, it, there are patients who actually do better because your immune system is, is corrected. Um, however, we do know that there are patients who develop serious infections. And every time I start a biologic on a patient, every rheumatologist I'm sure does the same, tells a patient that if you develop an infection that's severe or requires an antibiotic, you stop your, 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 your biologic treat your infection, and then you can start it up again. So we, we are always concerned, but if they're not taking any medication, they're probably at a greater risk. So biosimilar is similar. It's similar. It's not better. It's not worse. It's similar. So if I have a patient who I'm going to start a biologic, I could start a biooriginal, I could start a biosimilar. It really probably doesn't make much of a difference in a group of patients. There are gonna be, I'm very sure, though it hasn't been proven, but I'm very sure it's correct, there are gonna be patients who will respond to the bioriginal, but not to the biosimilar, and vice versa. Patients will respond to the biosimilar, but not to the bioriginal. So they're similar and I expect the patients to do similarly. Not better, not worse. Cost is always an issue, so that's a problem, all right? If cost were not an issue, why would I use a biosimilar? Why wouldn't I use a biooriginal, all right? What's the advantage of a biosimilar? Theoretically, it's cheaper, but it's really not cheaper. If it's not cheaper, then why not use it? And the question is, who is it cheaper to? If it's cheaper to the patient, that's good, right? The patient can afford it. If you have a national health system and the national health system is paying less money, that's good, right? But what if it's cheaper to an insurance company who is charging the patient exactly the same? So who is it cheaper to? No one. Who's made the money? The insurance company. That is not good. Well, if I was an insurance company, it'd be good, but it's not good for the system. 
So cost is an issue, and this is a major problem with the biosimilars. In the United States, I don't think it's going to be of advantage to the patient or to the system. I think it's going to be an advantage to the insurance companies, and that's not what we're looking for.